Hey everyone, I'm Charles Judd, and in this video, we're going to look at the 1.2F topic of route filtering. The CCIE blueprint tells us we should be familiar with using route filtering for any protocol. And here I want to take a look at a couple of examples of that using prefix lists and route maps. So first, let's look at prefix lists. In many ways, prefix lists are similar to an access control list. They contain ordered entries that are processed sequentially from top to bottom. As soon as a prefix match is found against a prefix list, processing will stop. And at the end of a prefix list, we have an implicit deny any statement. So all of those characteristics are similar to ACL function. However, prefix lists can be processed much faster, putting less load on the router's CPU. Also, as opposed to access lists where we would use those to filter traffic when applied to an interface, prefix lists are mainly used to filter routes themselves, whereas a typical ACL matches only the bits specified by the wildcard mask prefix lists can also match the subnet mask, and we can specify that as a range to be either permitted or denied. So let's break down the format of a prefix list command, and then we'll test that out in the command line. We start with the command IP prefix hyphen list, followed by a case sensitive name for that prefix list. In this example, you can see that this is simply called list in all caps. After that, we can optionally specify a sequence number. If we don't, then the initial entry will start with sequence number five, and that's going to increment by five for each new entry. We then would follow that with either a permit or a deny statement, and then the network prefix and prefix length. This is going to be insider notation. So for example, here, you can see we are denying routes that match the 192.168.10.0 network with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 or slash 24 insider notation. At the end, we can optionally use the keywords GE or LE, which means greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. In this case, we have the LE value less than or equal to, meaning that we're going to match routes on the slash 24 prefix length all the way to the slash 32 prefix length. Now you don't have to specify GE or LE, and if you don't, then the prefix list is going to look for an exact match instead. And at the end, of course, we would need to make sure we allow all other traffic, just as we do with an access control list. Because remember, we have an implicit deny any statement at the end. So with a prefix list, that would look like this. That would look like an all zeros network with a slash zero mask matching all the way up to a slash 32 mask. So we would say LE less than or equal to 32. So here's a very simple topology that we're going to use to take a look at just a couple of interconnected routers. And you can see that on router two, I have five networks configured on loopback interfaces. All of these are being advertised into my EIGRP process. And we, of course, have an EIGRP neighborship between these two routers so that all of the routes are currently being advertised over to R1. Let's connect first to router two and let's say show IP interface brief. And we can see all of our loopback interfaces here configured as we see in our topology. Now, if we say show run pipe to section router EIGRP, we're going to be able to see all of these networks being advertised into EIGRP as well. So we do see that. See all of those loopbacks listed here. So that's good. Let's go to router one and let's say show IP route. And you can see that all of our networks learned via EIGRP are here. All five of those are in our IP routing table. So let's look at filtering these with a prefix list. First, let's very specifically filter one of these networks. So let's say IP prefix hyphen list, and we can follow that with a name for our prefix list. I'm just gonna call this one filter in all caps. And if we look at contextual help, we can indicate a sequence number optionally. If we wanna do that, we can create a description for the prefix list to help us identify it or we can go to the permit and deny statements. Now, in my case, I'm gonna skip those optional parameters and I'm just gonna say deny, followed by the prefix insider notation. So let's specifically filter. Let's actually go back to R2 and take a look. 
let's actually filter the 192.168.10.128 network. You can see that that has a slash 28 subnet mask. So back on R1, let's say 192.168.10.128 slash 28. And if we look at contextual help again, we're going to see the prefix length options that we mentioned earlier. We have the GE and LE options for greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Now, since I'm being very specific here with a single route, I'm not going to use that at the moment. I'm going to tell it that my route should match exactly what this entry is. So I'm going to hit enter. And now let's add our permit statement at the end to permit all of our other networks. So I'm going to arrow up and instead of deny, I'm going to say permit and I'm going to say 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 less than or equal to, and I'm going to set that to 32. And now we need to actually apply our prefix list. And in this case, we need to do that under our router EIGRP process. So let's say router. EIGRP one, and we need to use the command distribute hyphen list here. And that's going to add a route filter policy. If we look at contextual help, in addition to the prefix keyword, we can also use a route map. You see that at the bottom. Again, what we're going to use is prefix. So let's say prefix, and we're going to reference our prefix list that we created, which was named filter. And finally, we need to indicate a direction. We want to do that on this router in the inbound direction. So in just a moment, we're going to see our EIGRP neighbor resync message come into our console, and that's going to indicate that our route configuration has changed. And we see that just happen as I was saying that. So let's break out of here and let's again say show IP route. And this time you're going to notice that the route that we specifically filtered, the slash 28 route, that's missing from the routing table. So we see the dot 64 slash 27 and the dot 160 slash 29. We no longer see the dot 128 slash 28 route, which is exactly what we would want to see here. Now we can also filter out a range of networks by using those GE and LE modifiers that I mentioned earlier. So first, let's go back under global configuration mode. We'll say IP prefix hyphen list, and I'm just going to make a new list here. I'm going to call this filter two, and let's filter the range from slash 28 to slash 30. So to do that, I would say deny 192.168.10.0 slash 24, and I'm going to specify that our route match should be greater than or equal to slash 28 less than or equal to slash 32. Once I hit enter, we can now again add our permit all statement at the end. So we'll say IP prefix hyphen list filter to permit our all zeros network and subnet mask. And I'll say less than or equal to 32. Now let's again go under router EIGRP one and let's apply the prefix list by saying distribute hyphen list prefix and the name of course is filter two. We'll do that also in the inbound direction. We'll hit enter. And again, we're going to see our resync messages come into the console as the route configuration changes. We had those messages, so I'll exit. And I'll again say show IP route. And if we take a look at our routing table, now you'll see that we only have the slash 26 and slash 27 networks. So all of our other routes, which were ranging from slash 28 to slash 30, those are now all missing from our IP routing table because we have effectively filtered those out. We can also use route maps for filtering as well. So let's take a look at that. Let's actually go in here under my EIGRP process. And I want to remove this filtering from my configuration currently so that we have all of our routes known again. So let me arrow up and I will prepend the no keyword, say no distribute hyphen list prefix filter to in. So that should take care of everything. We should see another resync message shortly. And if we say show IP route, we can take a look at our routing table. 
and we should have full awareness of all of those routes again, and we do, so that's good. We're back to normal. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of a route map, I would say go back and watch my 1.2D policy-based routing video. In that video, I discuss the structure and the logic of a route map, so I'm going to proceed here as if we already understand how to use a route map. But again, if you need more information about those, go and check out the 1.2D policy-based routing video. So now that we have all of our routes again, let's go under global configuration mode. And for this route map, let's create an access control list. Let's say IP access hyphen list standard, and I'm just going to name this list. And now we can identify a route for filtering with a permit statement. So let's filter out the, let's filter out the 192.168.10.64 slash 27 network. So I'm going to say permit 192.168.10.64 with a 0 .0 0.0.0.31 wildcard mask. Very simple. Let's exit here. And let's now create our route map. So let's say route hyphen map. We need to give that a name. I'm just gonna name this one map in all caps. And I'm first going to say deny to create our first deny statement. And when I hit enter, we're under route map configuration mode. So I'm going to match based on the IP address listed in the ACL named list. That's the name of the ACL that we just created. So let's hit enter. And let's break out of here. Let's do some verification before we move forward. Let's say show route hyphen map. And so we can see we have our deny policy in place. The match clause is set to the IP address indicated by the access control list named list. Now, one thing I still need to do is I need to add a permit statement to my route map. So let's do that. Let's go under global configuration mode route hyphen map, map, permit, and I'll tell you what, I'm gonna hit enter. I shouldn't hit enter here, but I'm gonna do that. I wanna show you what happens when we do that. If I hit enter and I break out and again say show route map, take a look at that command. Notice that when I hit enter, my original match clause was overwritten. So now I have a permit sequence here matching on the access control list. And that's because I didn't indicate a sequence number. When we do these with route maps, we need to specifically tell it a sequence number or it's gonna automatically overwrite sequence number 10. So let's go back and fix that. Route hyphen map, map, I want to deny. So this is placing my original sequence number 10 deny statement in there. I'm going to match that against the access control list named list. And now I can put in my permit all statement by saying route hyphen map, map, permit. But this time I wanna indicate my sequence number. I'm gonna make that sequence number 20 and that's gonna make sure that it's at the end of the route map. So if I hit enter, we'll break out. We'll again do a quick show command. And this time we see both of our sequence numbers. We see the deny statement matching on the access control list and we see our permit all statement at the end of that. Also notice our permit all statement, by the way, that doesn't require any match statement to be set. We don't have to match that to an ACL or a prefix list at all. So from here, it's basically the same to apply this to our EIGRP process as we looked at with prefix lists. Let's go under router EIGRP one, and we'll say distribute hyphen list. And this time, instead of saying prefix, we wanna say route hyphen map, followed by the name, which is of course map, and we want to do that in the inbound direction. Once again, we're gonna see some resync messages happening as this process resets and our route configuration changes. We'll see those come into our console shortly. We see that now. So now if we say show IP route, you'll see that of course we filtered out that slash 27 route. We have slash 28, slash 26. We've effectively filtered that out. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, well, 
why would I use a route map? That's a lot more work than just doing a normal prefix list. There's a lot more configuration involved there. And that's true, but we're not really using the route map to its full potential here. Now, these are very commonly used for route redistribution between protocols, and we can get really specific and complicated by using combinations of filtering techniques here. So one way we can do that, let's actually go ahead and create a new prefix list. And I'll say IP prefix hyphen list. I'll name that filter three. And I'm gonna say permit this time, a very important note. We're using the permit statement because I'm going to attach this to the route map. So this is the same principle as we see with an ACL. We're simply identifying traffic. We're not filtering it in this case. So that's why we're using permit here instead of when we saw the deny statement that we used when we're only referencing a prefix list without a route map. So I'm gonna say permit, and I'm going to match on 192.168.10.0 slash 24, and I'm gonna say greater than or equal to 28, less than or equal to 32. So essentially, all of our routes, greater or equal to slash 28, should be filtered when we're finished here. The only route left in our routing table should be the slash 26 route, because remember, we've already filtered the slash 27 route with our normal route map sequencing. So now let's say route hyphen map. The name of that is of course map. I'm gonna say deny. Now remember, if I hit enter here, that's going to overwrite sequence number 10. So I want to specifically state the sequence number here. I definitely want that to be above my permit all statement that's already in my route map. So I'm going to say sequence number 20 here. So that's gonna put it right underneath the processing of my access control list. So I'll hit enter and I'm going to match IP address. And instead of referencing an access control list here, I can say prefix hyphen list. And I can call out the name of the prefix list that I just created which is filter three. Now, if I hit enter, we want to be sure since we just overwrote our original permit statement in the route map, we wanna put that back as well. So let's say route hyphen map, the name is map, and you did just see the route configuration change, so we do have some things happening in the background. And we wanna say permit, and this time we wanna say 30 to add that to the end of our route map. So now if we say show route map and take a look at that configuration, now we have three different sequences happening. First, we're matching and denying based on the access control list named list. Second, we're also denying and matching on the prefix list called filter three. And then finally, we have our permit any statement at the end of that route map. So now let's say show IP route. And what we should see, we should only see that slash 26 network left in our routing table. Let's see if that's true. Yes, that is true. We only see the 192.168.10.0 slash 26 route as we would expect with the configuration that we have in place. So that's a look at route filtering using prefix lists and route maps. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.